In this episode, we are going to explore the ancient practice of feet washing. Okay, this should be feet, not hand. We don't wash hand in Lord's Supper. Okay, let's try this again. In this episode, we are going to explore the ancient practice of feet washing. Why do we need to wash each other's feet? Because we follow his steps. Can we bypass the washing of feet? Follow his steps. That's right. But did Jesus say we should wash each other's feet? He washed feet, we wash them. That's right. We know that he washed feet. But did he at any time commanded us to wash each other's feet? If I then your Lord and Master, if I'm your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, and I wash your feet, ye also ought ye to wash to wash one another's feet. Why? For I have given you an example. What should you do? That ye should do as I have done to you. You that don't believe in feet washing, should you do what he done? <laughs> That's right. In this video, you will now learn about the washing of feet in the Lord's Supper. This is a tradition oftentimes observed during the Lord's Supper, also known as communion. This practice rooted in humility and service holds significant meaning for many believers. Join us as we delve into the importance and continued relevance of feet washing in the faith of Jesus Christ. As I said, feet washing is a spiritual ritual often associated with the Lord's Supper, also called communion. However, some religious group believe it is a tradition that doesn't need to be followed anymore. I mean, one brother, he talked to me, he said, well, we don't wash feet now. I said, why not? He said, you don't read nowhere where the apostles wash feet. In this sermon, Pastor Gina James will prove that feet washing is still to be done when having the Lord's Supper. And he left us that example, then we ought to do. That's right. What he say do. That's right. Get ready to be uplifted as Pastor Jennings explains the importance of this ancient ritual and provides biblical evidence for its continued observance. Be prepared to gain a better understanding of feet washing and its place in the faith of Jesus Christ. When he came here in the flesh, that flesh was the Son of God, the Messiah, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and utilized that flesh as an example or a pattern for everybody in the world to follow. That's right. And to the Bible say, uh, he left us an example that we should his follow steps. His, steps. his steps. He washed feet, we wash them. That's right. Hmm? That's because right. we follow His, his steps. His steps. Follow his steps. That's right. I mean, one brother, he talked to me. He said, well, we don't wash feet now. I said, why not? He said, you don't read nowhere where the apostles wash feet. I said, let's go to the first apostle, Jesus. Jesus. And then I got the scripture and read one part. If I wash your feet, your feet. ye ought to, to wash, wash one another's feet. One another feet. I asked him one question. We, should we ought to do it? Ought to do it. He dropped his head and laughed and closed his Bible. He said, ain't nobody ever came to me that way. If I then your Lord and Master. Hear this. St. John chapter 13 and verse 14. If I then your Lord and Master. If I'm your Lord and Master. Have washed your feet. And I wash your feet. Ye also ought to wash. To wash. One another's feet. Why? For I have given you an example. What should you do? That ye should do as I have done to you. You that don't believe in feet washing. Should you do what he done? <laughs> That's right. Should you? Should you do what he done? He said you ought to do it. Yeah. And if he tell me I ought to do something, I ain't, ain't going to argue. No way. I ought to do it. Ought to wash. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey Amen. The police pull up next to me. Pull, pull over. Amen. I'm not going to give you a ticket this time, so you ought to slow down, or your <laughs> next ticket would be $10,000 fine. That's right. Next time he stop me over, it's going to be for driving too slow. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Ought to do it. You ought to wash one another's feet. Do you hear that? If I then, your Lord and Master, have ought washed your it. feet, ought to do it. That's right. Whatever Jesus said you ought to do. He right. left us an example that, that he should we follow, should his steps. follow his steps. His steps. And he left us that example then we ought to do. That's right. What he say do. That's right. Huh? 
Amen. He made apostles. Then they ought to be in the church now. That's right. He said, greater works than these shall you do because I've gone back to the Father. That's right. Meaning I'm going back to spirit. So it ought to be greater works in the church now. He That's told right. his apostles that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That ought to be preached now. That's right. He died and he came on back, a man from the dead. That ought to be done when he come for the church. That's right. He's going to present unto himself the glorious church. church. So in everything he done ought to be done. He called me master and Lord. Is and he your master and Lord? That's it. And if he your master and Lord, then you ought to do. Right. Every example he left. That's right. Hear this. Ye call, in St. John 13 and verse 13, quick, quick. ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. Yes. If I then your Lord and master have washed your feet, what should you do? ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Why, William? For I have given you an example. Look at the example he left. That's right. That's right. Look at his example he left. His example. 